Well, hey guys, welcome back to Cannon Creek. I'm Jeremy here in Southern Ohio. Check this out. We are maxing out our LT35 with this big old cedar utility pole. Why are we doing this? We need a header. So you just saw us get this thing loaded. Quite the challenge. I've got inches to spare front to back to get this sawmill through and back, back to the back. So what do we got? What's our biggest challenge right now? Well, we need a header. Our header needs to be 11 inches by 7 inches by 20 feet long. So I'm cutting it actually 20, uh, 20 feet 6 inches. Guys, let's get this thing laid out. Let's get through it. Let's check the size of this thing. This is the small end. So at the small end, we're 18 and a half. Let's check out the big end. Down here at the big end, we have 21. So a nice straight cedar pole. That's going to be very handy for this header. When I say 11 by 7 inches, is that header big enough? Probably not. But you'll see as I build this building that the construction of this will be just fine for what we're doing. I do see some nails. I got to pull these last few nails. I already pulled some. Get these nails out. We're going to start sawing this bad boy up. What's cool is I use copper nails on these cedar poles. Pretty neat. So what I'm going to do here is actually encapsulate the pith of this pole. This header, we want pure strength, so I don't want to take a chance on getting any cross grains or anything crazy. here at the project site and I'll tell you a little bit more about what I'm doing right now. We've kind of outgrown the mill shop. Not necessarily outgrown the original mill shop. It's just become too nice of a building to cut. So this is our new sawmill building. Definitely not going to be as nice as the original building. This header, not very heavy believe it or not. This thing is pretty daggone light. So we'll get this thing cut to length. It's going to be 20 feet exactly. We'll try to lift it in place and fasten it down. Try to beat this rain. Go ahead and square up our ends here. Dead center money. That's what we like. I got a center mark. First thing we gotta do is get this thing more centered on these forks. All right there. And I wanna get them out on the tip of the forks. The key here is gonna be to spin around without knocking this thing over. Now I've got a chain on the traco with a swivel. But I think this is gonna be my easiest route. By, by myself. We're gonna keep that thing kind of level. And, and good thing, if this was white oak, I wouldn't be able to get up here and hand muscle this thing together, but since it's a cedar, I can get up on the ladder and wiggle this thing around. Let's back up a little bit. <laughs> I just don't want, we're so close now, I don't want to drop it now, which I do drop them. All right, let's hurry up and get that thing fast out with a couple screws. Looks like we need to get down that way a couple inches. Shouldn't be a problem. I keep saying this thing's light, but still could hurt you. According to my marks on that side, it's tight. Now I no doubt have bigger screws than these three inch. I'm gonna get some lags to put all this together. 
trying to tighten everything up right now so it won't fall on our heads. It's almost 20 foot opening here. Sawmill sits in that corner. Another opening in the back to discard, uh, to discard the used the, the slats. Here's a 16 foot opening. So we got another 16 foot header. It's gonna go to top there, and then that corner will be boxed in, kind of some dry storage. And then we'll have these two big open bays to get in and out. Uh, so hopefully, like I like to do it, I saw the wood, stack it here, let it dry. I can get the skidler in. The reason I made this 20 foot, on average, 16 foot's the longest thing I cut, which I could have made 18. That's what the original mill shop is. It's 18 wide. But when you're bringing logs in, taking boards out, they're usually 16, six, almost 17. I, I just wanted a little more wiggle room. And this header with our angles, I think it's gonna be fine. And that's a good thing about what I do here at Cannon Creek is I try stuff that you're probably not supposed to try. I'll give you the results. This is a badass looking board though. It really is. This whole area back here, my master plan, we've been here five years. Uh, it's just so awesome how it's coming together. It's, it just seems like it's the other day I was tracking the track hoe back through here to cut our first poplar on the sawmill. And there was nothing back through here. Since then, I've moved the creek. We've got the woodshed. I've got the golf course maintenance shed. Now we're gonna have the mill shop. I think we're also getting power back here, which is a pretty big expense in itself to get power back here. We already have water. So the Cary Creek Mill Shop 2.0, I guess is what we're gonna be working on now. Uh, cutting our own boards. I am buying trusses. I'm buying store-bought trusses. I know, shame on me, but it's gonna make things a little bit uh, better for what I wanted to do. Yeah. But man, it was just like yesterday, I was driving that track go back through here. There's just, it's coming together and it feels good when you take on a project, especially a long-term project like what I'm doing here, that feels good as time goes by and that's what you need. You need time to get these projects done and that's what we're doing and it feels good. So let's go ahead and get this other header up and I wanna update you guys on what I've been doing this summer because I have done some cool projects. Don't have a lot of footage, but I can quickly show you some cool projects I worked on this summer. All right. Cow. Well, as you can see, we stayed plenty busy here at Cairn Creek this summer. Don't worry about me. I'm just fine. Guys, it's good to see you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for working with us, Cairn Creek. Over and out.